let's start with an experiment. Can you name the color of the font in which the words are written? Let's do a few more trials. So how did you do on this task? Let us know in the comment section below. The experiment that you just performed in is called the Stroop task. Named after and founded by American psychologist John Bridley Stroop, the Stroop task has been considered as one of the most used cognitive psychology paradigms for experimental research in numerous research fields, most notably in the research area of human attention. John Stroop, who researched in the fields of cognition and interference, founded the Stroop task in 1935 and published it in the Journal of Experimental Psychology in a study entitled Studies on Interference in Serial Verbal Reactions. And it's a task that continues to be used till date. The most elegant aspect about the Stroop task is its simple and intuitive structure. In this task, as we witnessed in the trial experiment at the start of the video, the participant is presented with a word stimuli and instructed to name the color of the ink in which the word is written instead of reading out the word printed itself. The stimuli in the Stroop task falls under three categories or three conditions. They are the neutral condition or the neutral stimuli, the congruent condition or the congruent stimuli, and the incongruent condition or the incongruent stimuli. The neutral stimuli or the neutral condition presents a stimuli in which only the text or the color is displayed. This is usually operationalized by presenting a set of X's in the red ink given here in the schematic or the word red printed in black ink for word reading. A congruent stimuli, on the other hand, or a congruent condition, presents the word and the color, which both refer to the same color concept as presented here in the schematic. Red, reading red, as well as colored in red. Yellow, reading yellow, as well as colored in yellow. Finally, the incongruent stimuli, or the incongruent condition, presents the word and the color in different color concepts as presented here. Green written in black and reading green while black written in green and reading black. Numerous modifications of the Stroop task have been proposed over the years. For example, the emotional Stroop task is a widely used modified version of the classic Stroop task which instructs participants to name the ink color of the word of emotional or neutral valence. A key concept that is studied in the classical Stroop task, as well as its modified variants, is called the Stroop effect. The Stroop effect is the delay in reaction time between a congruent and an incongruent stimuli. The Stroop effect has been widely used in clinical practice and investigations. This effect occurs when there is a mismatch between the name of the color which is written and the color it is printed in or the ink of the color it is printed in. Usually, when asked to name the ink of the color in which it is printed in, the participants tend to delay or show the Stroop effect if the ink in which it is written and the name of the color do not match. In other words, when presented with an incongruent stimuli, we observe the Stroop effect. Three recurring experimental findings have been observed in Stroop task experiments. A first finding pertains to a concept called semantic interference, which states that naming the ink color of neutral stimuli, for example, when the ink color and word do not interfere with each other, it is faster for participants to respond as compared to incongruent conditions or incongruent stimuli. It's called a semantic interference 
since it is usually accepted that the relationship in meaning between the ink color and the word are at its root of the Stroop interference. The second finding is pertaining to an aspect called semantic facilitation, which explains the finding that naming the ink of a congruent stimuli is faster than when responding to a neutral stimuli. Finally, the third finding pertains to explaining a concept called Stroop asynchrony. The third finding is both a combination of semantic interference and facilitation disappearance when the task consists of reading the word instead of naming the ink color itself. This is called the Stroop asynchrony and has been explained by reduced automatization when naming the color compared to reading the words. Neuroimaging techniques including the MRI, the fMRI and the positron emission tomography or PET scans have shown that there are two main areas in the brain that are specifically involved in the processing of the Stroop task performance. They are the anterior cingulate cortex or the ACC and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex or the DLPFC. More specifically, while both are activated when resolving conflicts and catching errors, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex assists in memory and other executive functions, while the anterior cingulate cortex is used to select an appropriate response and allocate attentional resources. The posterior prefrontal cortex creates the appropriate rules for the brain to accomplish the current goal. For example, in the context of the Stroop effect, this involves activating the areas of the brain involved in color perception, but not those involved in word encoding. It counteracts biases and irrelevant information. For instance, the fact that the semantic perception of the word is more striking than the color in which it is printed. Next, the mid-dorsolateral prefrontal cortex selects the representation that will fulfill the goal. The relevant information must be separated from the irrelevant information in the task. Thus, the focus is placed on the ink color and not the word itself. Furthermore, Research has suggested that the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex activation during a Stroop task specifically related to the expectations that the individual has regarding the conflicting nature of the prospective trial, but not particularly the conflict of the incongruent stimuli itself. Conversely, the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex aims to reduce the attentional conflict and is activated after the conflict is over. Moreover, the posterior dorsal anterior cingulate cortex is responsible for what decision is made, that is, whether someone will say the written word or the ink of the color in which the word is printed. Following the responses, the anterior dorsal anterior cingulate cortex is involved in the response evaluation or the decision whether the answer made is correct or incorrect. Usually, the activity in this region increases when the probability of responding with an erroneous response becomes higher. Various theories have been used to explain the Stroop effect. These theories commonly fall under what is called as the race class of models of cognition. The underlying notion of these race class of models of cognition is that both the relevant and irrelevant information are processed in parallel, but they are in a race to enter the single central processing unit of the brain during a response selection stage. We will briefly cover the four main theories or theoretical frameworks that have been used to explain this race-like behavior in the Stroop effect or in the context of the Stroop task paradigm. The four key theories include the relative speed of processing speed theory, 
the selective attention theory, theory of automaticity, and parallel distributed processing theory. Let's now briefly look at each of these theory and see the explanations they give in the context of the Stroop task or the Stroop effect. The processing speed theory, also called as the relative speed of processing theory, suggests that there is a lag in the brain's ability to recognize the color of the word since the brain reads the words faster than it recognizes the color in which the word is written. This is based on the idea that word processing is significantly faster than color processing. In a condition where there is a conflict regarding the words and the colors, that is, the Stroop effect is present, if the task is to report the color, the word information arrives at the decision-making stage before the color information, which presents a processing confusion for the brain. Conversely, if the task is to report the word because the color information lags after word information, a decision can be made ahead of the conflicting information. The next theory is the selective attention theory. This theory suggests that color recognition as opposed to reading a word requires more attention. The brain needs to use more attentional resources to recognize a color than to encode a word, so it takes a little longer. The responses lend much to the interference noted in the Stroop task or the Stroop effect. This may be a result of either an allocation of attention to the responses or to a greater inhibition of distractors that are not appropriate responses for the given task at hand. The third theory used to explain the Stroop effect is the theory of automaticity. This theory is the most common theory used to explain the Stroop effect. It suggests that since recognizing colors is not an automatic process, there is a hesitancy to respond. Whereas in contrast, the brain automatically understands the meanings of words as a result of the habitual reading that we undertake throughout our lifespan. This idea is based on the premise that automatic reading does not need controlled attentional resources, but still uses enough attentional resources to reduce the amount of attention accessible for color information processing. Researcher Sterling in 1979 introduced the concept of response automaticity. He demonstrated that changing the responses from colored words to the letters that were not part of the colored words increased the reaction time while it reducing the Stroop interference. The final theory is the parallel distributed processing theory. This theory suggests that as the brain analyzes information, different and specific pathways are developed for different tasks. Some pathways, such as the reading pathway, are stronger than others, such as the color naming pathway. Therefore, it is the strength of the pathway and not the speed of the pathway that is important. In addition, automaticity is a function of the strength of each pathway. Hence, when two pathways are activated simultaneously, such as in the context of the Stroop effect, interference occurs between the stronger and the weaker pathway, more specifically when the pathway that leads to the response is the weaker pathway. Today's video was brought to you by the Brain Cyclopedia channel. If you liked our content, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Also, leave us a like and let us know you liked the video. Share this video with someone you think will benefit from today's content. Finally, do not forget to comment what you thought about the video and or any other future video requests. And finally, follow us on all of our social media sites. We'll see you in our next video. Thank you.